Just Rick here introducing the first video in the Endgame Gearing Guide, or E3G for short. I intended to do this for 90 cap, but considering 95 cap is here now, it's about time we start fresh. In this first video, I want to talk about what gear is available to you in this new cap and what I suggest that you should farm depending on your current gear situation. So without further ado, oh, let's go. So before we start worrying about gearing up, there are a couple things that I want to lay out. First and foremost, you need to have a swap set by now in 95 cap. Without going into great detail, that's the gear that you put into this UI in order to empower your buff skill to make it more potent. At the making of this video, most of that gear is farmed in the Sanctorn region, but keep in mind that we'll be getting a new level 95 dungeon to get us an even more powerful swap set eventually. I will of course talk about it in this guide series once we get it, but you'll need to settle with what we currently have in the meantime. Next, you'll need to have a certain amount of a stat called Exorcism to do any endgame content. Exorcism is a raw stat found on gear that can be upgraded slightly by reinforcement. If you don't have at least the minimum amount for the content that you're doing, you will heavily nerf yourself and the entire party. Because of that, you usually can't just be carried by stronger peers while you yourself don't have comparable gear. The minimum exorcism requirement for a dungeon is displayed here on the dungeon entry screen. Lastly, I need to talk about how the gear sets have been simplified in 95 cap. In the past, the legendary sets worked by having the player choose up to 6 out of these potential 11 gear slots to act as pieces towards the entire set. Now in 95 cap, there will always be 3 distinct gear sets that do not interact with each other. And those are a 5 piece set given by your armor, a 3 piece set given by the 3 accessories, and another 3 piece set given by the 3 sub equipment. When gearing up, always try to fully complete one of these sets at a time to get a sudden jump in power due to the set effect. Now, I'm going to explain our new end game by simulating three potential scenarios that you might find yourself in terms of your character's current gear level after hitting level 95. Scenario 1 is you have no gear whatsoever. For example, maybe you cannot do or are struggling in Anton Raid. Scenario 2 is that you have decent gear such as partial epic sets and off epics or maybe a freshly new made jump character. As an example, your character can probably complete solo loop pretty well. Scenario 3 is that you have excellent gear and the old best in slots such as upgraded 90s, heblons, and beast accessories. As an example, you can easily carry DPS in beast dungeon. These are just kind of groups that I've made up and these lines are blurry depending on the class and the exact gear situations. Don't take it too seriously, but depending on what you think your current gear scenario is, will determine what your course of action will be here in 95 cap. Now with that all out of the way, we can start proper. Okay, scenario one is for you guys who either have no gear or you're just not very strong. Your goal is to farm level 95 Harlem legendaries, which encompass 11 out of your 12 gear slots. The NPC to help you accomplish this is Timothy, which shows up only after you've cleared your 95 scenarios. Now I suggest that you have at the very least one of the following gear sets prior to starting this. Although not technically necessary since the dungeons we'll be doing are not all that difficult, this will make things a hell of a lot easier for you in the short term. Of course, the stronger the set is, the easier it will be for you. In particular, the Halidom set should be easy enough to obtain since new players will have a sizable amount of the Carnelian required for them. Currently, there is also an event that will give you a full Econ set and a Liberation weapon as a rental, so capitalize on such a thing to farm this level 95 set permanently. To buy a level 95 legendary gear from Timothy, you need to trade him 400 Emblem of Heroes per piece. You'll also notice that he trades tens of these Tainted Energies for one Emblem of Hero. In other words, Tainted Energies can simply be looked as as one tenth of an Emblem of Hero. To get Emblem of Heroes, you need to farm Assault Mode by clicking this button here in the Harlem Dungeon screen. You get 8 entries into this dungeon area, which will load up a random scenario out of all of the dungeons here in Harlem. The entry cost per try is 10 Seeds of Birth and 10 Fatigue Points. On your 4th and 8th entry, you have access to a hidden dungeon, which is the Fight Club, and the boss here has a chance of dropping the aforementioned level 95 legendaries outright. I've seen it quite a few times already myself, which of course saves you the resources in buying the legendary outright. All throughout the dungeon, you'll be getting the Emblem of Heroes and Tainted Energies from the bosses, and you also have a small chance of getting a handful of emblems as a dungeon clearance reward. 
Timothy will also give you a quest where after clearing 10 hidden dungeon bosses from this assault mode, he'll let you select one of the three legendary sub-equipments, meaning that you even get a piece for free. One thing that you're going to notice about these Harlem legendaries is that they have what I call universal item and set options. In other words, the raw stats found on the gear are generally all the same, and there's only one set effect found in all armors, accessories, and sub-equipments. They're decent enough stats and sets for all classes, don't get me wrong, it's just it's all massively simplified. Keep that in mind because all of the epic gear that we'll be discussing later have a lot more diversity to them in terms of their individual item effects and their potential set effects. Now if you don't have a decent weapon yet, you can also purchase yourself an Emancipator weapon from Timothy as well. Instead, this will require 700 of an item called Miscellaneous Junk, which is a drop strictly farmed in the Sleepy Hollow dungeon. This is a very simple dungeon that does not have an entry cost and only requires 8 FP per run. The boss will drop about 10 of the aforementioned miscellaneous jump, as well as a handy amount of seeds of birth, making this a great place to farm it if you need them. There's also a daily quest that will give you 90 for doing a single run, meaning it should take you a week at the very most, if not just a few days for a rather potent level 95 legendary weapon. With this level 95 gear, congratulations! I'd now consider yourself to be at or above the starting point of someone who is decently geared, being able to clear Luke solo mode with ease. Now you're ready for the next step in gear progression. And scenario two is that next step for whenever you have decent enough gear. The thing about this scenario is that it is in a very nebulous gray area because you are caught in the middle of two extremes. Depending on what gear you have, you could go to legendary farming like the people with no gear in scenario one. However, you also very well could skip all of that noise and simply do some of the hyper end game grinding like all of the mega gear people in scenario three. That decision again is really dependent on your class and gear situation, but personally, I would farm a level 95 legendary set anyway. The reason for that is the level 95 Harlem legendaries are easy enough to farm for someone with your gear. Most importantly, however, these legendaries have a special quirk to them, and that is they can be upgraded into any level 95 Harlem epic of the same slot. And because of your gear situation, you can easily accomplish both of these tasks at the same time. These epics, while not being the strongest the game has to offer, will undoubtedly be much stronger than whatever you have currently. Your NPC to help you obtain Harlem epics is the Strawberry Nosed Della. To buy a Harlem epic from her directly will cost you 750 of an item called the Aberrant Crystal. But if you upgrade from a legendary gear, it will only cost you 500 and a few extra materials. Hence why I recommend getting the legendaries for the epics that you want. You also notice she's trading 10 of these aberrant fragments to one aberrant crystal. Again, don't be confused, they can simply be considered one tenth of a complete aberrant crystal. The dungeon you mainly farm for aberrant crystals is the Dawning Crevice, of which can be entered four times a day at the cost of 20 seeds of birth and 8 FP per run. Defeating the two mini bosses before the final boss increases his drop chance of dropping the aforementioned Harlem epics directly, but more consistently, he'll be dropping a sizable amount of aberrant crystals regardless. Can I also add that this is a pretty awesome boss fight with some amazing music? Now on top of this, of course, you can always simply do Hell Mode in this area just like before at the cost of 30 Demon Invitations. As you can see, there are the normal Hell Mode parties and then one dungeon will be randomly selected per day to be the Sky Rift Hell Mode. We'll talk about what the differences are with the Sky Rift in a second, but suffice it to say that all Hell Modes can drop level 95 Harlem Epics directly and the regular Hell Modes also have a chance of dropping 90 set epics as well for you people who were close to finishing a set from the previous level cap. Awesomely enough, all hell modes even have a chance of dropping the sky's legacy weapon which is the absolute best in slot weapon in the game currently at the very least though you'll be getting a handful of aberrant crystals to be used at the npc della to me this is a much more consistent and welcome method as opposed to the pure rng based hell mode of old this becomes especially apparent the closer that you get towards actually completing your epic sets since you can just buy the last few pieces from the npc instead of merely helplessly hoping that they drop now there are a few special things to note about these Harlem epics. First of all, any Harlem legendary can be substituted with a Harlem epic gear and still retain the legendary set effect. I got this ring to drop in hell mode for me, so I didn't need to farm the legendary ring at all and I still obtained the 3 piece legendary set effect for accessories. Just keep in mind that these legendary set effects are overwritten by epic set effects whenever you complete, or in the case of armors, partially complete the epic set effect. 
Say for instance I upgrade 3 out of the 5 of my legendary grade armors to epic. I will retain the 5 set effect due to the legendary gear set. However the 3 piece epic set effect will overwrite my 3 piece legendary set effect. Once you're completely upgraded to epics it would be as if you never had any legendary gear or sets to begin with. Which is a great way to ease into sets and slowly upgrade your gear as you get stronger ones. Additionally, Harlem epics are a lot more diverse than their legendary counterparts. Unlike legendaries, which only have one universal gear option for armors, accessories, and subequipments in their sets, each individual Harlem epic gear has its own unique gear option. The armors all have unique set effects depending on the armor type and the accessories and sub-equipments each have three different set options to choose from. You will need to pay attention to make sure that all your gear corresponds to those epic sets. Looking at the right side of your gear very generally, there are essentially two sets for damage classes and one set for the buffer type characters like Crusader. Make certain that you're getting the right pieces to correspond with the correct set. Now, I know I've spent a great deal of time explaining this gear, but one of the most important things that you've got to keep in mind is that at the end of the day, all of this Harlem Epic gear is merely temporary. Now, don't get me wrong, this gear is incredibly potent and still worth getting. It is by far one of the easiest epic sets in the history of DFO to obtain due to the Della NPC. But unfortunately, while it's strong, it's not the strongest gear in the game and cannot be upgraded into it either. In other words, it's a dead end gear set. What Harlem Epics do though is amply prepare you to do all of the content available in the game and set you up perfectly for doing even harder content once it comes out. Having a full Harlem set will probably be the entry point for most parties once Fiend Wars come out to DFOG, a topic that we'll talk about once it actually arrives. Scenario 3 is for the people who already have excellent gear coming into 95 cap. Your strength already rivals or surpasses an entire Harlem epic set. In other words, you can bypass farming them entirely. For those kinds of players, you only have one option available to you, and that is obtaining the current best in slot gear in the game, Tabor's Epics. The NPC to assist you in obtaining Tabor's Epics is Joshua here in the Pandemonium Junction. He will require 600 of an item called the Sky Fragment to buy a Tabor's Epic directly or only 480 if you upgrade from either a beast accessory set or a heblon sub equipment set. These two sets are the only ones that can be upgraded in this manner and you'll retain all enchantments and reinforcements if you do. If you want any other Tabor's epics however, you'll need to either buy them from Joshua directly or get lucky and have them drop for you outright. Like the other NPCs, Joshua will trade you one sky fragment to 10 sky wishes. In other words, a sky wish can merely be considered as one tenth of a sky fragment. You guys noticing a needless trend here? Anyway, the primary place that you'll be farming for sky fragments is promptly named Tabers the Fallen Paradise. It is essentially a boss gauntlet with three rather difficult bosses with slight gimmicks. You can enter up to three times a day for a total of six times a week, and it will cost you 15 Terranium and 10 FP per entry. The gear requirement is rather high to do this dungeon efficiently. However, if you're strong enough or have a proper party composition, I wouldn't consider this dungeon as the hardest that this game has to offer by a long shot. If you're doing beast comfortably, then this will probably go by even more comfortably. You'll get 30 Sky Fragments per run and have a very minuscule chance of dropping Tabor's gear directly. Now the other method to get Tabor's epics we've already kind of touched on and that is from the Sky Rift Hell Mode. Again, a random dungeon from the Harlem region will be selected to be the Sky Rift for the day. It will run you 30 demon invitations like normal, but it will additionally cost you 2 Sky Rift sensor stones as well, which is a new item that, well, I guess I have to explain that now, don't I? Okay, Sky Rift Sensor Stone comes in two versions. One is the untradeable one, of course named the Rift Sensor Stone, or RSS for short. The other is the tradable version, the Rift Response Stone, or RRS for short. You can exchange your RRS for an RSS at grandest whenever you need to use them. The interaction is exactly identical to the Demon Invitations and Demon Challenges from before this patch. I put on the screen all of the methods that I know on how to obtain 
both. In essence, this just means that your limiting factor for how many endgame hells that you can do is not necessarily demon invites like it used to, it's actually these rift sensor stones. Anyway, back to the sky rift hell mode. You can more or less treat this hell mode just as any other with a few key distinctions. This hell mode only drops level 95 Harlem epics at the bare minimum, but most importantly, it has a small chance of dropping Tabor's equipment outright. As you can imagine, one lucky drop can save you a hell of a lot of time from buying the gear normally. Additionally, even if you don't get a drop, you'll be guaranteed at least a small number of Sky Wishes or Sky Fragments to help you buy a piece from Joshua eventually in exactly the same vein as Harlem Epics at Della. And really, that's about it for you Hyper Endgame players. You quite literally have no business doing any of the other stuff that I previously mentioned, since it will not directly improve your current gear status in any way. In fact, another way to look at this is, farming Tabers and Sky Rift is the ultimate goal of all DFO players currently. Tabers the Fallen Paradise is hands down the most important dungeon that you must start doing and will be the gatekeeper for all future content, since the gear that you slowly obtain here will exclusively be used to upgrade into the stronger sets given in the future. The sooner that you can start doing Tabers and farming Sky Rift Hells, the faster you will be able to get your best in slot sets and prepare yourself for future content. And that guys finally explains the three gear scenarios of what you should farm. Of course none of this is exclusive and you can do a combination of any of what I've talked about as your gear dictates. Now, those keen among you will notice that I left something out of this discussion. All of what I've talked about thus far are what I'd consider the primary things that you must focus on daily to achieve your gear goals. What I'm about to mention though, I'd consider absolutely optional, and that is disaster areas level 1, 2, and 3. In short, the disaster area is a random Harlem dungeon with a sprawling layout. You'll notice Terranium on the map, which will boost your Terranium drop rate upon completion if you bother to go out of your way to clear those maps. Each level of the disaster area gets progressively harder. No seriously, these dungeons are some of the hardest normal dungeons in the game. And finally, they actually cost a boatload of FP to run. But most importantly, and the reason that you run this dungeon, is that the rewards that the boss will drop are dependent on the disaster area level entered. It's by no mere chance that each of the three levels of this dungeon correspond to the three gear scenarios that I've already brought up. Disaster area level 1 is designed to help you obtain your level 95 legendaries just a tiny bit faster. Faster, and as a reward the boss will drop a few tainted energies. Disaster area level 2 is for the level 95 Harlem epics and drop a few aberrant fragments. And disaster area level 3 is for Tabor's epics and drops a few sky wishes. On one hand all this area takes is a whole lot of FP so you aren't really losing any actual resources for doing it. And the only thing limiting you is your FP. But at the same time, the amount of rewards that you get for it are pretty piddly. In the grand scheme of things, this dungeon is only very slightly helping you towards those gear ends. And it's not nearly as efficient as doing Assault Mode, Donning Crevice, or Tabers is for their respective gear sets. So you've kind of got to weigh in whether or not you think it's worth the time to do Disaster Area at all. To put into perspective, a single day of Tabers Forgotten Paradise is about the equivalent of running nearly two weeks of non-stop Disaster Area Level 3 grinding, but I had to mention it as an option for the truly hardcore or truly desperate. Along with Disaster Area, there are a few final additional methods to help you get these gear sets just a little bit faster, and I'll just list them all out for you. First is the Explorer Club's Mercenary System. Here you can use your Glory Crystals to purchase up to 800 Emblem of Heroes and 400 Miscellaneous Junk every month. In the Black Market, the Pumpkin Ball NPC will trade you 80 Emblem of Heroes daily for 120 Terranium. I've already mentioned it, but if you forgot, Hell Mode will drop Aberrant Crystal Fragments, and Sky Rift Hell Modes will additionally drop some Sky Wishes and even Sky Fragments. And lastly, there are of course going to be plenty of events such as what we've got with the Adventurer's Guide to Harlem, which is giving all kinds of stuff to boost this grind further. Now one question you might have is one that I've intentionally not talked about yet, and that is, what gear set should I get and in what order should I get them? It's one of those questions that is dependent on too many variables to answer with a definitive answer. So instead, I'll just give a few guidelines as to what I suggest. First off, complete one gear set at a time for the set effects. Remember, they are armor, accessories, and sub-equipment. Next, 
prioritize trying to get the biggest boost in damage in the shortest amount of time slash resources. If you don't have a great epic weapon yet, but have decent everything else, hell, buy the Sky Legacy weapon to start out with. Lastly, and this is probably most important, is to be open to simply roll with whatever gear drops out right for you, whether it be a legendary from assault mode or an epic from hell mode. Getting a piece to drop out right for you means that you saved yourself a lot of resources as opposed to buying that same item from the NPC. In the case of everything up to and including Harlem Epics, that gear is just temporary anyway, so it's not that important that you get the best in slot set. You're going to be replacing them with the Tabor set eventually, after which time then you should probably start worrying which set you should strive for. All this to say, use the drops that you get to your advantage to severely reduce your farming time. This concept not only applies to your gear set, but it also applies to the order of which sets you should complete as well. Even if you read a guide that tells you, hey, you should upgrade your Hemlon set first. If you've gotten three Tabor's armors for the set that you want to drop, dude, just finish the armor set. Even if that piece drops eventually, at least with the Tabor's epic, there is a system to change any Tabor's gear that you buy from Joshua into any other Tabor's gear for a small cost. But that's a topic for another video. If you do these things, you really can't go wrong because you've got to consider it's all the same color in the end anyway. And that guys is all I have to say about how the gear progression works in 95 cap. There are plenty of things that I didn't go into complete detail on, but regardless, I think this lays out exactly how the end game works now in DFO, and I think I've provided at least a little bit of direction if you were confused. With the future content, I'll of course expand this series to include the next step to our gear progression. But for now, good luck in our new 95 cap, newbies and veterans alike, and I will catch you nights. Oh.